Good evening from the International Space Station Flight Control Room here at the Johnson Space Center in Houston, where at this hour flight controllers are working with other support personnel around the world in preparation for the return of three crew members who resided aboard the International Space Station for the past five and a half months. Here in the flight control room, Flight Director Judd Freeling is in charge of operations. He is standing in the center of your screen. Alongside him on just above uh, where he is is uh, spacecraft communicator Andreas Mogensen of the European Space Agency. As this team uh, prepares for the deorbit burn of the Soyuz MS-06 spacecraft less than 38 minutes from now, that will bring home Alexander Mazurkin of Roscosmos and NASA astronauts Joe Acaba and Mark Van de Hey. Across uh, the Atlantic Ocean, just outside of Moscow in the town of Karolyov, you're looking at a live picture of the International Space Station Flight Control Room at the Russian Mission Control Center, where Russian flight controllers are in uh, communication with Mazurkin, the Soyuz commander, whose call sign is Altair, strapped into the center seat of the Soyuz descent module, flanked on his left by Mark Vandeheim, and on his right by Joe Acaba, as they prepare for the deorbit burn that will begin in the trip home after 168 days in space. Uh, the atmospheric stage and uh, the maximum G-loads. Uh, again, a reminder, we should have some calm for some time. Uh, so could you please provide reports? Uh, so wh what again, uh, what, what is the moment when we have calm right after the maximum G-load? Uh, so you will have the compact. The time is 05, 12, 20. So it's a kind of forecast uh, that we will have calm at this particular moment. That is the uh, interpreted version of uh, Russian uh, flight controllers talking to Mazurkin on board uh, the Soyuz MS-06 spacecraft uh, with uh, a rundown of when they can express, expect a loss of communications as they move through the plasma regime entering the Earth's atmosphere. When they exit the plasma regime, that's the point at which uh, the maximum G-loads of about four to five Gs build up on the crew members on board the Soyuz and when they can expect communications during that period of time. The focus of attention uh, has been uh, down at the landing site in south central Kazakhstan over the past 48 hours. At this hour, weather conditions have improved somewhat. The uh, search and recovery forces are at the uh, Jezkazgan airport ready to board Russian Mi-8 helicopters around the time of the deorbit burn uh, that's coming up in about 35 minutes to begin the trip, uh, about 30 minutes uh, helicopter ride down to the landing site which is about 90 miles to the southeast of Jezkazgan. Earlier concerns about uh, weather conditions disrupting uh, tonight's landing and recovery operations appear to have been super, uh, superfluous as uh, the conditions have improved to the point where we are now looking at a forecast of overcast clouds, a uh, cloud deck of overcast conditions at about 700 feet, about three miles of visibility in light fog, winds out of the southwest, 12 knots gusting to 18 knots, and a temperature which is fairly balmy for this time of the year uh, in Kazakhstan of about 30 degrees Fahrenheit to greet the crew when they return. 12 Russian Mi-8 helicopters are being employed for tonight's recovery of uh, Mazurkin, Akaba, and Vandahai. Ten of them uh, deploying uh, from uh, the Jezkazgan airport to the prime landing site. Two of the helicopters already were pre-positioned uh, far to the southwest near the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan, and they are going to be deployed from um, and be airborne from uh, the Kryini airport near the launch site in Baikonur uh, to uh, move about halfway from Kryini toward the prime landing site in what is known as the ballistic landing region in the unlikely event that that a, a technical issue would cause uh, the Soyuz uh, to uh, land uh, short of its intended prime landing target. Uh, the uh, Russian Mi-8 helicopters uh, will be accompanied 
by uh, all-terrain vehicles and uh, Antonov fixed-wing aircraft. Those fixed-wing aircraft, particularly the large Antonov 26 aircraft, uh, will be flying in the uh, vicinity in a racetrack pattern around the landing zone to act as a, a flying command and control center and a data relay uh, center uh, that uh, will relay both voice and telemetry from the Soyuz spacecraft back to the Russian Mission Control Center in Korolyov. So the stage is set for a nominal recovery operation uh, back at the Karaganda Airport, uh, far to the to the north uh, east of uh, the landing operations tonight. Uh, there is a, a Gagarin Cosmonaut Training Center aircraft at the Karaganda Airport and a NASA Gulfstream jet. Uh, once the crew uh, is out of uh, the Soyuz spacecraft following its landing. And uh, if uh, the nominal procedure is followed where the crew is brought in into a nearby inflatable medical tent to get out of their Sokol launch and entry suits into more comfortable flight clothing and to uh, receive a, an initial battery of medical tests, uh, the crew then will be loaded into three separate helicopters for a two-hour helicopter flight back to Karaganda, after which they'll split up with Akaba and Vandehei boarding that NASA jet for the trip back to Houston, and Mazurkin boarding the Gagarin Cosmonaut Training Center aircraft to be flown back to Chkalovsky Airfield outside of the training base in Star City, Russia, which is also his home. Mark, what's the reading? 160, good. Georgi. So it's 160 partial pressure of O2, so it is all calibrated. Would you please repeat your last, Alexander? A little more than five hours ago, uh, while still together as a, a six uh, man crew on board the International Space Station, the uh, crews had an opportunity to say farewell to one another gathering in the small passageway uh, between the Poisk module on the space-facing side of the uh, Russian segment of the International Space Station. Behind uh, Mark Vandehei, as you can see in this view, uh, is the open hatchway to the Soyuz MS-06. The crews again had a final opportunity to say goodbye to one another as Vandehei, Alexander Mazurkin there in the foreground, and Joe Akaba made their way through uh, the hatch into the Soyuz MS-06 to close the hatch and begin uh, undocking preparations. Everything uh, has continued to go by the book. In the lower right-hand corner of your screen there is Anton Shkaplerov, who is the new space station commander for Expedition 55, which is now underway aboard the station under Shkaplerov's command, along with NASA uh, astronaut Scott Tingle and Norishige Kanai of the Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency. There you see uh, the uh, final uh, technical uh, coordination between the crews as Shkaplerov closed the hatch uh, on the space station side of the docking interface between Poisk and the Soyuz MS-06, saying farewell to his colleagues who had been uh, together with uh, him and his other crewmates uh, since they had been launched uh, from the Baikonur Cosmodrome back in December. Once uh, the hatches had been closed uh, between the Soyuz and the International Space Station's Poisk module, there were a series of leak checks to make sure that we had an airtight seal at the docking interface. The three crew members aboard Soyuz, uh, Mazurkin, Akaba, and Vandehei, climbed into their Sokol launch and entry suits, conducted leak checks on the suits themselves, and then uh, conducted the uh, depressurization of the small passageway or vestibule uh, between uh, Poisk and the Soyuz to ensure that we were down to vacuum for the undocking that uh, was coming up uh, a short time thereafter. That undocking occurred as uh, the Soyuz and the International Space Station passed over southeast Mongolia at an altitude of 252 statute miles at 5.08 p.m. Central Time, 6.08 p.m. Eastern Time, 
springs on both sides of the docking interface pushed off against one another to enable the Soyuz to back away from Poisk. There were two separation burns conducted by the Soyuz thrusters uh, in the minutes that followed to increase an opening rate to a distance of about 12 miles now, separating Soyuz and the International Space Station in preparation for the deorbit burn that's coming up in less than 29 minutes. Guys, so the, atti the attitude has been built. We have joined GSO in attitude, and we have local vertical and uh, uh, no, 180.0424 is the next time uh, mar mark. We will have to send the command to inhibit the uh, ECOV sensors. We co confirm that. With everything uh, in readiness, uh, the Soyuz uh, will uh, conduct its deorbit burn uh, a short time from now. That will be a four-minute, 39-second retrograde firing of the uh, Soyuz main engine to slow it down by 128 meters per second, enabling it to drop out of orbit uh, for its entry into the Earth's atmosphere. Some uh, 27 minutes after the deorbit burn, the pyrotechnic separation of the three sections of the Soyuz will begin as it makes its way through the atmosphere, the heat shield uh, in the direction of travel to repel the heat that will build up around the vehicle. About 15 minutes before touchdown, the command will be issued to uh, open up the uh, chutes, two pilot parachutes, followed by the deployment of a drogue chute and then the main parachute to slow the uh, Soyuz down to a descent rate of 7.2 meters per second. And just a few seconds uh, before touchdown, the soft landing engines on the aft uh, of the Soyuz will fire and uh, landing will occur. Landing is scheduled at 8.31 p.m. Central Time 8.31 a.m. Kazakhstan time on Wednesday morning, 27 minutes before sunrise. Sunrise at the landing site is less than an hour away. And again, as we mentioned, uh, the uh, Russian search and recovery forces uh, called Rosaviatsa, the civil uh, uh, the Civil uh, Search and Recovery Patrol team uh, that works uh, for the Russian government. They are all uh, forwardly placed now at the airport in Jezkazgan, uh, which is to the northwest of the landing site itself. The Russian Search and Recovery Forces soon will be boarding uh, their respective helicopters to make their way uh, down to the landing site, about a 30-minute uh, trip. Uh, to arrive at the landing site in advance of the Soyuz and form a uh, racetrack oval-shaped uh, pattern as they fly around the landing site awaiting the arrival of the Soyuz spacecraft. Aboard the International Space Station, the uh, Expedition 55 crew, a three-man crew for the next three weeks, uh, will have an opportunity uh, to have an off-duty day tomorrow, uh, basically take a breather after a rather high-paced uh, level of activity over the past few weeks. Uh, Anton Shkaplerov is the new space station commander from Roscosmos, joined by NASA's Scott Tingle and Norishige Kanai, uh, the flight engineer from the Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency. That three-man crew uh, will conduct uh, what are known as indirect handover operations uh, as a three-man crew for the next three weeks until the launch on March 21st of the next trio of residents who will uh, 
take up occupancy at the space station. That uh, crew uh, led by Oleg uh, Artemiev and NASA astronauts Drew Feustel and Ricky Arnold are set uh, to launch from the Baikonur Cosmodrome on March 21st on the Soyuz MS-08 spacecraft from the Baikonur Cosmodrome on a two-day 34-orbit rendezvous with a docking schedule to the, to the Poisk module on March 23rd to restore the station to a six-man operation. Gosha, are you there? Yes. Could you please remind me regarding the four command? Should we send it? Are we planning to send it? No, there is no need to send it, uh, uh, Sasha. No need? Okay, copy that. A short time ago, the uh, crew was um, informed about uh, the updated uh, coordinates for landing based on the latest information from the ballistics specialists at the Russian Mission Control Center. The current coordinates, and this of course could uh, be tweaked and changed uh, after landing, but the current landing coordinates are 47.25 north latitude, 69.37 east longitude. Again, that is uh, the prime landing site in the southern zone called Zone 6, that is to the southeast of the town of Jezkazgan, about 90 miles from Jezkazgan. It's about a 30-minute helicopter ride. Those helos will have uh, their rotors spinning a, a short time from now, with the first helicopters uh, taking off uh, around the time of the deorbit burn some 22 minutes from now. Sasha, there is another reminder. At page 66, before the separation, don't forget about the switch. Georgi, thank you for the reminder. We will activate it before the separation. We will activate it before the separation. And before you deploy the parachute, uh, you know, you will have to, de to switch off the switch. After the change of the parachutes, yes, that's correct.
This is Mission Control Houston, less than 18 minutes away from uh, the deorbit burn that will begin uh, the final leg of the trip home for Joe Acaba, Mark Vandehei, and Alexander Mazurkin. Again, uh, the uh, three-person crew left uh, on the International Space Station, now Expedition 55, is Anton Shkaplerov, the new station commander, joined by uh, Scott Tingle of NASA and Norishige Kanai of the Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency. Uh, that uh, will expand to a six-person crew in three weeks with the arrival of Drew Feustel and Ricky Arnold of NASA and uh, Russian cosmonaut Oleg Artemyev. The uh, deorbit burn, uh, once again, will be four minutes, 39 seconds in duration, slowing uh, the Soyuz down by 128 meters per second, starting at an altitude of 265 statute miles. Currently, the Soyuz MS-06 and the International Space Station are flying over the South Pacific, moving from uh, northwest to southeast in an orbit inclined 51.6 degrees to either side of the equator. The uh, latest uh, report uh, from uh, the landing site uh, from uh, NASA personnel uh, who are in coordination with the Russian Search and Recovery Forces is that uh, the uh, GCTC aircraft at Karaganda is uh, planning to fly to Jezkazgan to uh, simplify uh, the recovery operations. The NASA Gulfstream jet that's also at the Karaganda airport is uh, awaiting uh, the green light to relocate to Jezkazgan itself, contingent on suitable runway conditions at Jezkazgan. Uh, a small contingent of uh, NASA support uh, personnel, including a flight surgeon, Chad Rowe, who's the director of human spaceflight operations uh, in uh, Russia, and uh, a pair of uh, Russian nurses who uh, are assigned to NASA. They spent uh, the night in all-terrain vehicles near the landing zone. The uh, plan is for them to watch the landing from there and then relocate uh, to the capsule. They're just uh, a few kilometers away from the landing site. So the Russian search and recovery uh, forces are playing it safe, but uh, continuing with a, a series of procedures here to ensure nominal operations. Meanwhile, the first uh, of the uh, 10 helicopters that have been pre-positioned at the Jezkazgan airport are now airborne en route to the landing zone. There was a uh, LOS. Mark, uh, do you monitor the partial O2 pressure? Uh, Sasha, we did not hear you. There was a short LOS. Yes, Zora. We sent the inhibit ECOVA command at the prescribed time, and visually the attitude is built for retrograde motion, no issues. I copy you. Thank you. Sasha, we asked you to uh, select, you know, the modes on VKU, whatever you like, whatever is most suitable for you. Copy. Okay, so in five minutes, so we're standing by for the maneuver. We're standing by.
This is Mission Control Houston, 12 and a half minutes away now from the deorbit burn uh, to begin uh, the descent back into the Earth's atmosphere for the Soyuz MS-06. The uh, Soyuz commander, Alexander Mazurkin, uh, will be using the call sign Altair. You'll be hearing that uh, referred to in calls from the Russian flight controllers in Karlyov. You're looking at a balcony view of their flight control room just outside of Moscow. And again, uh, the latest information uh, is that uh, the Russian search and recovery forces are going to be uh, sending uh, the GCTC, the Gagarin Cosmonaut Training Center aircraft, from uh, the Karaganda Airport to uh, Jezkazgan to be forwardly placed to receive the crew once uh, they land and get in their respective helicopters for a shorter flight. This is uh, essentially the way uh, we recovered Scott Kelly two years ago after his year in space uh, by uh, repositioning uh, the aircraft uh, to Jezkazgan, making it only a 30-minute helicopter flight uh, from the landing zone back uh, to uh, Jezkazgan itself. The uh, NASA Gulfstream jet is awaiting uh, a final approval uh, to take off from Karaganda to head to Jezkazgan, also uh, dependent on uh, suitable runway conditions in Jezkazgan. There is uh, some snow falling at the uh, landing site, uh, mostly a wet snow, not uh, much accumulation reported. Uh, the visibility is uh, acceptable. Everything appears to be uh, proceeding on track for an on-time and nominal landing and recovery operation for Akaba, Vandehei, and Mazurkin. The maneuver will start in one minute. Thank you. And then I'll have to press this. Yes, Mark. Affirmative. Okay. All right, the maneuver is complete. I just saw it on the display. Copy, Alexander. And right now you can deactivate the fans. We send the C3 command. It has been sent. F9 
and D9 has been already illuminated. Six and a half minutes until the deorbit burn, everything in readiness. Alexander Mazurkin strapped into the center seat of the descent module, flanked on his left by Mark Vandehei, Joe Acaba on the right. The crew uh, ready for a four minute, 39 second retrograde firing of the Soyuz main engines to slow them down by 128 meters per second and begin the descent out of orbit and back into the Earth's atmosphere. Georgi, one more minute. During the descent, Alexander, please report every second the time and the value of the burn, and uh, also that Kadu is operating nominally, so please report on that during the descent. Copy. Thank you. Within uh, seconds after the completion of the deorbit burn, the orbital module, the uppermost section, the bulbous section of the Soyuz spacecraft, will be depressurized. That's done uh, in advance of the pyrotechnic separation of the three sections of uh, the Soyuz spacecraft. The module separation commanded uh, some uh, 27 minutes after the deorbit burn, scheduled just before 8.06 p.m. Central Time this evening. Alexander, one more thing. Don't forget the following. During the re-entry, uh, tighten the straps so that you are secure. You're safely strapped during the landing. And make sure that the ODF is uh, secured properly for the landing. Yes, copy. All right, copy. Thank you. Okay, Mark, O2, light. Okay, so what is the current value? Is uh, It is 185. Inaudible is not eliminated anymore, and the value is 185. That is correct. Okay. Uh, PKRD is closed. Yes, it's closed. Thank you. Less than three and a half minutes away from the deorbit burn, the Russian flight controllers at the Russian Mission Control Center in Karayov have instructed Mazurkin uh, to uh, provide a running narrative of the progress of the deorbit burn in terms of chamber pressure and fuel consumption for the uh, four minute, 39 second duration of that engine firing that uh, will slow the Soyuz down, allowing it to drop out of orbit for its high speed entry back into the Earth's atmosphere. Mazurkin, Van de Heij, and Akaba wrapping up 168 days in space. 
2,688 orbits of the Earth and a journey of 71.1 million statute miles. Two minutes till the ignition. Yes, we confirm the same. Two minutes. And you can. Coming up on one and a half minutes until the deorbit burn, uh, the Soyuz and the International Space Station now flying over the South Atlantic, just to the east of the Falkland Islands, about to begin a southwest to northeasterly swing uh, that will carry uh, the two craft uh, across the west coast of Africa a short time from now. Gadsby has been sent. Inside a minute until the initiation of the deorbit burn. Seven is confirmed. Combined gas so is also confirmed. And we are expecting SKD opening. Yes, it's open. Thank you. The burn is enabled. Standing by for the uh, initiation of the ignition of the main engines. One minute till thruster firing. Combined gas is still confirmed. Visual attitude cannot be controlled anymore. Five seconds. And we expect thrusters to fire. SKD is on. It is illuminated. And the deorbit burn is underway, right on time, with the Soyuz flying over the South Atlantic, a 4 minute 39 second retrograde firing. 15 seconds, 046, and the burn value is 7.9. Copy. Thirty seconds, zero forty-six, and the burn value is fourteen decimal six. And we're going to page fifty-two. Correction, page fifty-three. Happy mark. Thank you. And uh, the prop pressure. Thank you very much, Mark. Is fourteen twenty-seven. One minute, 046, and the burn is 29 meters. Copy, that's great. One minute, 15 seconds, 046, 35 meters. The parameters are nominal. Copy. But uh, the prop pressure is 1194. The prop consumption 96 kilometers uh, kilograms. Inaudible. One minute 45 seconds. 046. 48 meters. Parameters are nominal. Two minutes, 0 046, 128 kilograms of used prop, uh, 57 meters. Copy. The parameters are nominal. Halfway through the uh, deorbit burn, everything looking good on board the Soyuz MS-06. The burn in 64 meters. 
Parameters are nominal. Two thirty zero forty seven seventy meters. Copy. We are approaching the first stage. Two forty five zero forty seven. The burn is seventy six meters. Parameters are nominal. Copy. Three minutes, 193 kilograms of prop has been used, 047, the burn is 84 meters, Kadu parameters are nominal, copy. 315, 047, 91 meters, Kadu parameters are nominal. Three thirty two hundred and twenty six of kilograms of prop has been used zero forty eight ninety nine meters and Kadu properties and parameters are a nominal copy three forty five zero forty eight one hundred and five meters. The parameters are nominal. Nearing the end of the uh, deorbit burn, so far so good. This should result in a uh, Reduction in velocity by about 128 meters per second for the Soyuz MS-06 and its three occupants. has been used 048, 113 meters. Kadu parameters are nominal. Copy. 415. The burn is 119048. Kadu parameters are nominal, and we're preparing for SKD uh, deactivation. The burn is 125, 126. SKD is off. The thermal sensors are connected. Copy. And the deorbit burn is now complete, uh, having achieved the necessary deceleration of the Soyuz velocity. Landing scheduled 47 and a half minutes from now. Mark, can you please check bow pressure? In work. SA pressure is stable at 753 and the bow pressure is decreasing. Copy. Inaudible. And uh, right on schedule, the uh, upper section of the three-section Soyuz spacecraft, the orbital module, is being depressurized in preparation for module separation, the pyrotechnic uh, separation of the three sections of the Soyuz that is coming up uh, just before 8.06 p.m. Central Time this evening. Everything is correct. We, I can hardly hear you, but I will continue reporting. Okay, Alexander, I agree with that plan. We have you loud and clear. Copy, Georgi. Boo, pressure is 150. And SA pressure is stable at 753. Copy, Alexander. The noise is really loud, but please keep reporting. In about uh, 12 minutes or so, the uh, Soyuz uh, vehicle will be about 93 miles away, or 150 kilometers away from the International Space Station. This is at the point uh, where VHF voice communications is expected to be at best ratty and uh, maybe unavailable for a period of time.
due to the distance between the antennas on the Soyuz vehicle and those that receive VHF communications on the International Space Station. Once the Soyuz approaches its landing site, voice communication and data telemetry from the Soyuz will be available through an Antonov uh, 26 fixed-wing aircraft that is uh, going to be airborne in a racetrack pattern around the landing site to act as a, a flying command and control center, relaying that information back to the uh, Russian Mission Control Center that you see in this view from a balcony camera in Korolyov outside of Moscow. So uh, it is typical uh, for voice communications to be lost uh, for a period of time with the crew uh, returning uh, in a Soyuz vehicle uh, just based on the uh, geometry between uh, the communications uh, antennas on the Soyuz and the International Space Station. The uh, two vehicles are currently flying over the South Atlantic, approaching the west coast of Africa. The Soyuz has completed its deorbit burn and is now uh, beginning uh, to uh, slip out of uh, low Earth orbit uh, for its entry into the Earth's atmosphere. The key uh, times uh, that you should be aware of the module separation is the next major milestone at uh, 8.05 and 51 seconds p.m. Central Time, followed about three minutes later at 8.08 and 41 seconds Central Time by entry interface, the point at which uh, the uh, Soyuz will uh, literally enter the Earth's atmosphere at an altitude of about 326,000 feet. The crew and the Soyuz will, will begin to feel the first tug of gravity on their bodies since they were launched back on September 13th last year. They will move into the plasma regime. Their entry into plasma uh, is scheduled at uh, 8, 10 p.m. Central Time for about five minutes. And uh, once they exit that plasma, they will uh, experience their maximum uh, buildup of G-loads, gravity uh, loads on their bodies of about four to five Gs at an altitude of some 20 miles above the Earth. The command to open chutes uh, on the Soyuz uh, is scheduled uh, to be initiated at 8.17 p.m. Central Time. Two pilot parachutes will first be deployed, the second of which uh, will extract uh, the drogue chute on the Soyuz vehicle. The drogue chute is then released, slowing the Soyuz down from a descent rate of 230 meters per second to just 80 meters per second. The main parachute uh, will follow in sequence, uh, covering an area of some 1,000 meters. It slows the Soyuz down to a descent rate of just over seven meters per second. Its harness is first allowing the Soyuz to descend at a canted angle of some 30 degrees to expel excess heat from reentry. Then it shifts the Soyuz to a straight vertical descent. The soft landing engines will fire just a few seconds before touchdown. How are you? Great. That's good. Altair, 15 minutes to the end. Altair, 
The separation will take place in 15 minutes. Georgi, I can hardly hear you. 15 minutes till the separation. Copy, Georgi, thank you. And uh, with voice communications having been uh, temporarily uh, restored uh, between the Soyuz and the Russian Mission Control Center, reminding them that uh, module separation is scheduled uh, now in about 14 minutes if everything goes as planned. That uh, module separation will occur at an altitude of 140 kilometers or just under 87 miles above the Earth. Everything continuing to go smoothly, touchdown less than 40 minutes from now. The uh, Russian search and recovery forces in uh, a series of uh, Russian Mi-8 helicopters are airborne heading to the landing site. They will line up and queue up basically in a uh, racetrack pattern around the landing zone, awaiting uh, the arrival of the Soyuz vehicle. Once it touches down, uh, the most uh, critical uh, recovery helicopters will touch down in sequence right behind uh, the Soyuz vehicle, including uh, the teams uh, that uh, will have the inflatable medical tent, if it is to be used tonight at the landing site uh, or Wednesday morning, as the case may be uh, locally in uh, Kazakhstan, that will be followed uh, in succession uh, by other uh, critical RSC Energia and medical support personnel who uh, will uh, be working to extract the crew from uh, the Soyuz spacecraft uh, and place them in uh, chairs nearby their uh, vehicle uh, for a short period of reorientation to uh, Earth's gravity, uh, an opportunity to get their equilibrium back uh, before they're either brought into the medical tent, should it be used tonight, or to uh, reload them into uh, uh, the MI-8 helicopters, one for each crew member that will return them. In this case, it appears to Jezkazgan with just a 30-minute helicopter ride from the landing site. And once again, uh, communications uh, with the uh, Soyuz vehicle are, as expected, uh, intermittent. At this point, uh, as the Soyuz uh, approaches uh, the beginning of its descent through the Earth's atmosphere, Alexander Mazurkin, uh, the Soyuz commander operating under the call sign of Altair, uh, was instructed uh, to continue talking, providing status reports so that uh, if communications or when communications are uh, restored, either through the VHF link or uh, through the Antonov 26 fixed wing aircraft at the landing site, uh, the Russian flight controllers will be receiving those communications in a prompt fashion. This is Mission Control Houston, our first view of uh, 
the landing site uh, to the southeast of uh, the town of Jezkazgan. This is uh, from a uh, satellite link from one of the all-terrain vehicles that uh, began its trek about uh, 36 hours ago from uh, Jezkazgan to the landing site. It uh, is not exactly at the touchdown point uh, where the Soyuz uh, is expected to land, but it's close. And as soon as uh, the Soyuz has in fact landed, this uh, all-terrain vehicle and other support uh, vehicles uh, will make their way to the spacecraft uh, for the expedited uh, extraction of the crew. The temperature at the landing site is about 30 degrees Fahrenheit. We're inside uh, 35 minutes until touchdown. Everything uh, is continuing to go by the timeline. We're about uh, nine minutes away from the uh, computer commanded pyrotechnic separation of the three sections of the Soyuz spacecraft. Again, this is a uh, view from an all-terrain vehicle at the landing site, uh, some 90 miles to the southeast of the town of Jezkazgan. You can see the dusting of snow uh, on the terrain there. Uh, the temperature is uh, some 30 degrees Fahrenheit, uh, which is fairly mild for this time of the year in south-central Kazakhstan. At the landing site, uh, the uh, search and uh, recovery forces have now uh, refined uh, what they believe will be the landing coordinates for the Soyuz MS-06. Uh, the current uh, coordinates, uh, 47.19 north latitude, 69.34 east longitude. Uh, that uh, would be a bullseye touchdown for the Soyuz if it uh, materializes. Landing schedule 31 minutes from now.
This is Mission Control Houston, about three minutes away from the um, scheduled separation of the three sections of the Soyuz spacecraft. We're less than 30 minutes away from touchdown. Alexander Mazurkin uh, strapped in the center seat of the descent module of the Soyuz, uh, flanked on his left by Mark Vandehei, wrapping up his first mission in space. And uh, to Mazurkin's right, Joe Acaba, completing his third flight into space and second long-duration mission on the International Space Station. Altaire, Moscow, how do you copy? Altaire, if you copy us, uh, could you please reply? Countdown clocks here in Mission Control ticking backward uh, toward the anticipated landing of the Soyuz MS-06 some 27 minutes from now. We are standing by for the next major milestone, which will be module separation. Call us if you can hear us. This separation will happen in one minute and a half, 90 seconds. Georgi, uh, you know, the comm is intermittent, so the separation program is uh, activated. We are standing by for uh, Esgarazar, so uncaged. And the time is, uh, the separation time is 050550. And once again, voice uh, communications with the crew restored. Standing by for module separation. Uh, we copy it. We are standing by for the separation. And we have confirmation of module separation right on time. The separation, if you can hear us. The uh, confirmation of module separation occurring at an altitude of 87 miles above the Earth. The uh, Soyuz MS-06 uh, descending uh, by the book. The next uh, activity uh, of note will be uh, entry interface, so the Soyuz entering the first traces of Earth's atmosphere, that coming up in less than three minutes at an altitude of 326,000 feet or 62 miles above the Earth. The first uh, pull of Earth's gravity against Mazurkin, Akaba, and Vandehei in 168 days.
Everything uh, throughout the course of the day has gone uh, by the timeline. Uh, the uh, crew members saying farewell to one another aboard the International Space Station and closing the hatch on the Soyuz vehicle just before 2 p.m. Central Time. Undocking occurred uh, some three hours later at 5.08 p.m. Central, 6.08 p.m. Eastern Time as uh, the International Space Station and the Soyuz uh, MSO-6 spacecraft undocked over southeast Mongolia. Left on board, uh, the three-person crew of Anton Shkaplerov, uh, the new uh, Soyuz, uh, or the new International Space Station commander, and his two crewmates, NASA's Scott Tingle and Norishige Kanai of the uh, Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency. They will be a three-person crew for the next three weeks until the launch on March 21st and the docking two days later of Oleg Artemiev and NASA astronauts Drew Feustel and Ricky Arnold. And there's a video once again uh, from the landing site, uh, 90 miles to the southeast of Jezkazgan. Solid overcast uh, at the landing site. Temperatures about 30 degrees Fahrenheit as uh, the first uh, all-terrain vehicles uh, queue up uh, ready uh, to move into position near the spacecraft once it touches down. Altair, wish you successful landing. And a good view of uh, some of the all-terrain vehicles that set out from Jezkazgan about 36 hours ago. They are not at the landing site uh, specifically. They're nearby, but uh, it won't take very long for them to move towards uh, the Soyuz spacecraft once it uh, has touched down, landing scheduled 22 minutes from now. Unintelligible noise. The uh, Soyuz spacecraft has not only entered the uh, Earth's atmosphere, but now is in the plasma regime for about the next five minutes. This is where temperatures around the uh, spacecraft are, uh, will build up to about 2,500 degrees Fahrenheit, ablated uh, by the heat shield as uh, the descent module travels uh, in that direction with the heat shield pointed in the direction of travel. 
once uh, the Soyuz emerges from this plasma regime uh, in about uh, three minutes or so, uh, the crew will feel uh, its maximum G load building up on their bodies, four to five Gs at an altitude of some 21 miles above the Earth. Touchdown now less than 19 minutes away. Altairi, this is Moscow. Altair, MTC Moscow, how do you copy? This is Mission Control Houston, uh, some 16 and a half minutes away from uh, the landing of Mazurka, Nakaba, and Vandahai in Kazakhstan. Uh, the uh, search and recovery helicopters are nearing uh, the landing zone. Russia, so what is the entry offset value? The, Ten to the right. Altair, how do you copy? I copy loud and clear. The integral is 17, the offset. Uh, inaudible. Zero, seven, ten, six. 16, integral 16 uh, plus. Uh, how are you feeling, guys? Oh, better than anyone. It's a pressure. 756 millimeters, 756. Inaudible. Uh, so the integral is 14 plus 209. Copy. You're hearing that uh, familiar beeping tone from a radio beacon on the Soyuz spacecraft that uh, is providing uh, position information uh, to the uh, search and recovery forces at the landing site uh, in Kazakhstan with touchdown expected just 15 minutes from now. Uh, we should be uh, in position now where the Soyuz would have almost consistent uh, communications from Alexander Mazurkin, the Soyuz commander, uh, with the Antonov 26 fixed wing aircraft relaying data, telemetry, and altitude uh, position through the Soyuz altimeter uh, to the uh, Russian flight controllers there in Korolyov.
We should be uh, moments away from uh, the command to uh, open up the parachutes on the Soyuz. We'll be standing by for shoot uh, confirmation shortly. This uh, command uh, expected at an altitude of 10 and a half kilometers or six and a half miles above the Earth. Less than 12 and a half minutes until the anticipated touchdown of the Soyuz MS-06. We're still standing by for confirmation of shoot deploy, which should have occurred just a couple of minutes ago. And uh, search and recovery helicopters in the vicinity of the landing zone have now established visual contact with the Soyuz MS-06. Parachutes are out. Everything uh, continuing uh, to proceed normally towards touchdown 11 and a half minutes from now. Once again, uh, the Rosaviatsa Russian Search and Recovery Forces uh, in the vicinity of the landing zone, uh, especially the airborne Russian Mi-8 helicopters, have established a visual contact with the Soyuz MS-06. Its parachute has been deployed uh, as it uh, continues to descend toward its landing site some 90 miles to the southeast of the town of Jezkazgan.
Nine minutes until touchdown. Everything continuing uh, to proceed uh, per the schedule. The Soyuz descending under its uh, large main parachute towards a uh, position some 90 miles to the southeast of the remote town of Juzkazgan in south central Kazakhstan. Search and recovery forces, all terrain vehicles are all positioned uh, to begin uh, the recovery of the crew a short time after touchdown. This is Mission Control Houston. You're looking at, at a view from a balcony camera overlooking the Russian Mission Control Center in the town of Karolyov on the outskirts of Moscow. As we are just uh, seven minutes away from the anticipated touchdown of the Soyuz MSO-6 descending under its parachute towards uh, its landing zone to the southeast of the town of Jezgazgan. Everything uh, per the entry timeline has gone by the book so far as we're standing by for the uh, search and recovery forces who are in contact with the crew on board the Soyuz uh, to uh, provide updates for us as we approach landing time. Inside five minutes until touchdown. All quiet on the loops at this point. The search and recovery forces are uh, positioning themselves uh, to begin uh, the process of uh, arriving at uh, the capsule following touchdown to begin the extraction of Mazurka, Nakaba, and Vandahai.
This is Mission Control Houston. Uh, by the clock, we're about two minutes away from touchdown, still awaiting uh, further voice communication uh, from the Russian search and recovery forces who are in visual contact uh, with the Soyuz spacecraft descending under its main parachute. Inaudible. We should be uh, seconds away from uh, the anticipated touchdown of the Soyuz spacecraft, still waiting for verbal confirmation of that. The uh, all-terrain vehicles near the landing site uh, that provided uh, television a short time ago are uh, likely repositioning themselves closer to the uh, touchdown point to reestablish a uh, video capability uh, for post-landing activities. At the Karaganda Airport, uh, the uh, Gagarin Cosmonaut Training Center aircraft uh, is ready to take off to head to Jezkazgan, has not yet received approval to do so, to move to Jezkazgan, so they're standing by for the green light, as is a NASA Gulfstream jet. And uh, there it is, Soyuz MS-06 back on Earth. The official touchdown time was 8.31 p.m. Central Time, right on the dot, right on the money, and it landed in an upright position. The uh, large orange and white parachute uh, billowing nearby, but there uh, is your spacecraft with its three occupants back on Earth, Alexander Mazurkin, Joe Acaba, and Mark Van de Heij back on terra firma after 168 days in space.
Again, uh, the report uh, from the Russian Mission Control Center was that touchdown occurred right on time at uh, 8.31 p.m. Central Time, 8.31 a.m. Wednesday morning at the landing site in Kazakhstan. You see a thick overcast uh, greeting the crew upon its return to Earth. The uh, spacecraft reportedly from the search and recovery forces landed in an upright position. What that means is that uh, the crew will emerge uh, from uh, the upper hatch on the Soyuz and uh, clamber down a uh, small ladder uh, to be placed, uh, we presume, in uh, a series of chairs nearby the spacecraft uh, for a short period of time to get their uh, land legs back. You see one of the uh, search and recovery helicopters uh, about to land nearby, but uh, Akaba, Vandahai, and Mazurkin are back on Earth after 168 days and a mission that spans 71.1 million miles. And all-terrain vehicles uh, now moving in position uh, near the spacecraft. We'll be getting a closer view of uh, the Soyuz spacecraft once uh, the uh, satellite uh, link on the all-terrain vehicle moves uh, closer uh, to the uh, capsule itself. And you're looking at one of the uh, search and recovery helicopters landing nearby the Soyuz MS-06. And the report now from the Russian Mission Control Center uh, from the search and recovery forces, uh, Alexander Mazurkin reporting that the crew is feeling very well. You can see in this uh, live view from uh, an all-terrain vehicle at the landing site in uh, south-central Kazakhstan. Uh, some of the uh, RSC Energia technical personnel are working uh, to remove uh, the lines uh, from the large parachute from uh, the Soyuz descent module. Inside uh, that descent module, Mazurkin, Vandahai, and Akaba are waiting uh, to be extracted one by one. The uh, the crew should be extracted shortly following its on-time landing at 8.31 p.m. Central Time, 8.31 a.m. Wednesday morning in Kazakhstan.
And now uh, the all-terrain vehicles are repositioned uh, close uh, to the uh, descent module, a great view of um, the Soyuz MS-06, and you can see that uh, ladder set up uh, alongside of the uh, spacecraft. The crew will be extracted from the top of the Soyuz. Alexander Mazurkin, the commander who's in the center seat, will be the first out. Once again, uh, a good view of the Soyuz MS-06. We'll get that signal back momentarily. The uh, spacecraft landed upright on time about 10 minutes ago at uh, 8.31 p.m. Central Time, about 90 miles southeast of uh, Jez Kazgan in south-central Kazakhstan. And the uh, RSC Energia personnel are repositioning the uh, ladder on the proper side of the uh, Soyuz vehicle uh, through which uh, the crew will be extracted a short time from now. Again, uh, there are two uh, hatches uh, from which uh, the crew can be extracted on a Soyuz spacecraft. Uh, for a landing in which the spacecraft is pulled over onto its side, uh, there's a side hatch that they uh, extract the crew from, in this case, having landed upright. Uh, this will be the more traditional extraction of the crew from the top hatch. And the first uh, crew member that will uh, be removed from the spacecraft will be Alexander Mazurkin.
This is Mission Control Houston. It's been about 14 minutes since uh, the landing of the Soyuz MSO-6 on the steppe of Kazakhstan. Uh, you see uh, members of the NASA team uh, of the Search and Recovery Forces who flew from Jezkazgan by uh, Russian Mi-8 helicopters to the landing site. The Soyuz landed upright, obviously, and uh, the uh, RSC Energia technical personnel are in the process of uh, beginning the extraction of the crew one by one down that uh, ladder. The likelihood is they'll be put in uh, reclining chairs for a few minutes uh, to get their land legs. We'll be standing by for uh, further disposition of uh, where they intend uh, to take the crew, whether it will be inside an inflatable medical tent. Uh, we're still waiting for word as to whether or not uh, both a NASA Gulfstream jet and a uh, Gagarin Cosmonaut Training Center aircraft will uh, be uh, dispatched from the staging city of Karaganda to the forward uh, staging point in Jezkazgan uh, to expedite the recovery of the crew. These are members of the uh, Rosaviatsa Search and Recovery Forces uh, coordinating uh, the uh, further and future disposition of the crew once they're extracted from the Soyuz spacecraft. Landing occurred some 17 minutes ago on time at uh, 8.31 p.m. Central Time, 8.31 a.m. Wednesday morning there in Kazakhstan. This is Mission Control Houston. Uh, again, you're looking at the Soyuz MS-06 spacecraft on the ground as the extraction of the crew members uh, is underway. Uh, part of the uh, search and recovery uh, team, the NASA support team, included uh, NASA Public Affairs Officer Dan Hewitt, who is at the landing site right by the spacecraft. Dan, if you can hear me, uh, Tell us uh, what is going on as we watch uh, the action here uh, via the uh, satellite link from Kazakhstan. Yeah, sure thing, Robin. I got you loud and clear. Sounds like you're already getting video. So as you can see, the castle's down on the ground, landed upright. We actually got to watch it come down under the chutes quite a bit, and then it disappeared into a cloud layer. There's clouds. I think the last we heard were about 400 meters or so off the ground, but. Pretty cloudy, but good visibility besides that. Cold temperatures, but not as cold as it's been. But so far, a successful landing. You can see the search and recovery forces are up on top of the Soyuz right now. They're going to start pulling the crew out any moment now. Dan, uh, it, despite uh, the um, weather conditions and the uncertainty about movement of planes and so forth, it looked uh, like the helicopters landed in very swift fashion, and of course, uh, a Soyuz landing upright only helps to expedite the, the extraction of the crew, right? Yeah, we got lucky. We've been dodging weather, it seems, for the past couple of days. Things were looking pretty bleak until yesterday. We, had, uh, we actually had quite a bit of rain turned into freezing rain. 
So some icy conditions, but luckily the weather moved through a lot faster than was anticipated, and we were able to have a nominal landing today. So it's, it's good to be out here. We're worried we might get stuck in airports and stuff, but all the teams made it out, and pretty soon we'll be seeing these crew members. Uh, is uh, the inflatable medical tent uh, going, going, going to be erected and in play uh, following the extraction of the crew? The plan is for the tent. I don't see it being set up quite yet, but as you might be able to hear, we still have helicopters landing. Uh, a team has come ahead of time on a series of all-terrain vehicles, the ETVs. We actually had some of the NASA team camp out last night with them just in case the helicopters weren't able to make it, but as far as the last plan communicated, the medical tent should be set up here. Uh, as all three crew members are going to be taking part in that field test experiment, and the nominal plan has them doing it right here at the land. So. And um, I don't know if you've heard anything uh, more recent uh, there on the ground, uh, but we're still waiting for a final uh, decision as to whether or not uh, the crew will be flown in helicopters back to Jezkazgan. Uh, for an expedited return there, or whether they'll go back to Karaganda, where the uh, GCTC and NASA planes are? I expect to find out shortly, but last word, the nominal plan is going to be to have the crew go to just as gone. And it looks like there we go, our first crew member out. Looks like we got Ms. Erkin coming down the slide first. Got it. And so with that, our, our center seater, our Soyuz commander is out. He's going to get carried over now. They have the stairs set up already just a few feet away. And next up, our NASA crew members will be coming out shortly. Dan, uh, appreciate uh, all of the info, and uh, we'll be looking uh, forward to further information here shortly on uh, where the crew is going to go and uh, the inflatable medical tent and whether or not uh, the uh, field testing uh, that is uh, part of uh, this post-flight medical uh, data collection, whether that will be in play today uh, given the uh, conditions out there. Yep, and even if they aren't able to do it in the field, the field test uh, always has a backup of doing it back at the airport that we uh, deploy to, so that is still on the table if they aren't able to deploy the medical tent. And Dan, uh, as uh, you are speaking, uh, we're hearing uh, that the um, both the uh, GCTC plane, the Gagarin Cosmonaut Training Center aircraft, and uh, the NASA Gulfstream jet will be relocating to Jezkazgan from Karaganda. They've just received approval to do that. As we look at Alexander Mazurkin, uh, the Soyuz commander who has now logged 334 days in space on his two long duration flights. So it appears uh, as if you uh, and the other uh, helicopters will be flying the 30 minutes, the shorter distance, to Jezkazgan uh, for, uh, along with the crew members, for the disposition of. Uh, their activities before they split up uh, to head back to their respective homes. Yep, we'll copy that. All right, we got a couple more helicopters coming in, and we're going to be pulling these crews out, so I'm going to get back to work here. Uh, it was good talking to you as always, and I'll talk to you again soon, Rob. All right, Dan, have a safe trip home. Uh, Dan Hewitt, NASA Public Affairs Officer with the uh, Search and Recovery Forces in Kazakhstan. Joe Acaba, out of the uh, Soyuz spacecraft, uh, having completed his third flight into space and a total of 306 days in space. And uh, as he was uh, for both launch and uh, today's entry and landing, Akaba seated in a chair to the right of Alexander Mazurkin. Mark Van de Heij will be the last out of the spacecraft, and he'll be placed in a chair to the left 
of Alexander Mazurkin. Again, uh, we've uh, in the last few minutes received word uh, from uh, the search and recovery forces uh, that both uh, the NASA Gulfstream jet in Karaganda and uh, the Gagarin cosmonaut training aircraft uh, will be dispatched from Karaganda to the Jez Kazgan airport uh, to uh, receive the crew as uh, Vanda Hyanakaba will board that NASA jet in Jez Kazgan for the trip back to Houston. Mazurkin will board the Gagarin cosmonaut training aircraft for the flight back to his home and his training base in Star City, Russia. And there is Mark Vandehei, all three crew members now out of the spacecraft. This is Mission Control Houston. Once again, uh, views of uh, Joe Acaba, Mark Vandehei, Alexander Mazurkin at the landing site uh, being attended to by their flight surgeons and uh, NASA nurses. They uh, will be uh, boarding uh, respective helicopters soon to be flown uh, about 30 minutes uh, to the northwest from the landing site uh, to the town of Jez Kazgan where uh, the uh, NASA Gulfstream jet uh, that had landed uh, several days ago in Karaganda along with a Gagarin Cosmonaut Training Center aircraft will be relocated from Karaganda to Jez Kazgan. Uh, that uh, because of the improving weather conditions at the landing site and at the staging cities. Oh, there were some changes. I uh, particular
This is Mission Control Houston. It has been about uh, 29 minutes since the landing of uh, Soyuz MS-06 in a uh, remote landing site uh, to the southeast of the town of Jezkazgan. Uh, you're looking at the three crew members uh, enjoying some fresh air after 168 days in space. A journey of 71.1 million miles at an end. Alexander Mazurkin, the Soyuz commander, right uh, in the field of view. On the right of your screen, NASA astronaut Mark Van de Heij having completed his first flight into space of 168 days. I nominal landing and everything was fine. There was nothing unexpected. There were no malfunctions, and we're very glad to see you. Thank you. What about the tent? And uh, as you can see, uh, members of the Search and Recovery Forces about to hoist uh, Alexander Mazurkin in his chair. They'll uh, be moved, uh, we believe, to an inflatable medical tent nearby to get out of their Sokol launch and entry suits into more comfortable flight clothing and to receive their first uh, medical tests following uh, their return to Earth, which uh, culminated in an on-time, on-target landing at 8.31 p.m. Central Time. Was the food good? It was excellent. <laughs>
And as you can see, uh, the orange tent uh, has been uh, erected uh, near the uh, spacecraft. Alexander Mazurkin has already been brought inside. Uh, Akaba and Vandehei to follow. RSC Energia personnel uh, also uh, clamoring around uh, the spacecraft to remove uh, some of the initial cargo uh, that was brought home from the International Space Station. And you can see Van de Heij and Akaba both uh, being uh, assisted in their chairs into the inflatable medical tent. Again, the plan is uh, that they will get out of their Ahsoka launch and entry suits. They'll get into more comfortable flight clothing, receive uh, initial medical tests. Why I was stopping? Let's let's go, let's go. The uh, plan calls uh, for a uh, Gagarin cosmonaut training center aircraft and the NASA Gulfstream jet that uh, flew several days ago into the Karaganda Airport, the main staging city, uh, to the north uh, east of the landing site. For those planes uh, to be relocated to the airport in Jezkazgan just uh, 90 miles away from uh, this landing site you're looking at. Uh, that will uh, help expedite uh, the crew members uh, to fly in uh, search and recovery helicopters only about 30 minutes uh, to Jezkazgan, where they ultimately will split up with Van de Heij and Akaba boarding that NASA jet for the flight back to Houston and from Mazurkin to board the Gagarin Cosmonaut uh, Training Center aircraft to fly back to his training base and his home at Star City outside of Moscow. How about now? So I'm going to go to the tent and take the um, uh, video of the medical processes. Thank you. 
just in case over here. This is Mission Control Houston, a view back inside uh, the International Space Station Flight Control Room here at the Johnson Space Center. Uh, you saw the uh, video over the past uh, 45 minutes or so of uh, the extraction of the uh, returning crew members who landed safely in uh, the Soyuz MS-06 spacecraft at 8.31 p.m. Central Time, 8.31 a.m. Kazakhstan Time on Wednesday morning. Uh, the uh, Entry and landing uh, were perfect. Everything went by the book. And uh, at this hour, the three crew members are inside the inflatable medical tent nearby their spacecraft in south central Kazakhstan, uh, getting out of their uh, launch and entry suits, getting into more comfortable flight clothing, as they uh, will ultimately uh, be flown by helicopters uh, about 30 minutes uh, to the uh, northwest to the town of Jezkazgan where uh, a Gagarin cosmonaut training aircraft and a NASA Gulfstream jet are being relocated from Karaganda to Jezkazgan for the final uh, act in the recovery of the crew. This is Mission Control Houston. 
With the uh, television at the landing site uh, having been terminated following uh, the extraction of the uh, three Soyuz crew members from their spacecraft, they are now inside an inflatable medical tent nearby. They're getting out of their uh, Sokol launch and entry suits, getting into more comfortable clothing. They will be flown by helicopters about 30 minutes uh, to the town of Jezkazgan, where uh, two aircraft, a Gagarin Cosmonaut Training Center aircraft and a NASA Gulfstream jet will be relocated from the Karaganda Airport to Jezkazgan a short time from now. At that point in Jezkazgan, the crew will split up with Mark Vandehei and Joe Acaba boarding uh, the NASA uh, plane uh, for a flight back to Houston. Alexander Mazurkin, uh, the Soyuz commander, will board uh, the Gagarin Cosmonaut Training Center aircraft for a flight back to uh, Chukalovsky Airfield outside of his training base and his home in Star City, Russia, outside of Moscow.
This is Mission Control Houston. Uh, we're still standing by uh, waiting to see if uh, there will be any additional uh, television with replays of uh, today's landing activities that culminated just under an hour ago with uh, the touchdown of the Soyuz MS-06 spacecraft in uh, south central Kazakhstan. Landing occurring at uh, 8.31 p.m. Central Time, right on time. The three crew members are in good shape uh, out of their spacecraft and in an inflatable medical tent awaiting uh, initial medical testing. This is Mission Control Houston. Um, with all of the video exhausted from the landing site, uh, we will wrap up our coverage for the day. Just to recap briefly, uh, the three uh, Expedition 54 crew members, Alexander Mazurkin of Roscosmos and NASA 
Astronauts Joe Acaba and Mark Vandehei landed uh, on target and on time at 8.31 p.m. Central Time, 8.31 a.m. Kazakhstan Time on Wednesday morning, about uh, 90 miles to the southeast of the town of Jezkazgan. Uh, despite uh, some uh, adverse weather conditions, it was an on-target landing. Search and recovery forces arrived at the spacecraft uh, within minutes of touchdown, the Soyuz landing upright. The crew was extracted quickly uh, from the spacecraft, placed in uh, nearby chairs, and have been uh, brought into a uh, inflatable medical tent uh, very close to the spacecraft. They've gotten out of their uh, launch and entry suits. They're in more comfortable flight clothing and undergoing initial medical tests at the moment. The plan uh, is calling for a NASA Gulfstream jet and a Gagarin Cosmonaut Training Center aircraft uh, to fly uh, from uh, Karaganda, uh, well to the northeast of the landing site, to Jezkazgan, where the uh, crew members uh, will uh, be flown as well by helicopter and will board their respective aircraft uh, with Van de Heijen and Acaba set to return to Houston, Mazurkin set to return to his training base and his home at Star City, Russia. So with that, uh, we'll conclude our coverage for the day. The Expedition 54 crew is safe and sound back on Earth following 168 days in space. This is Mission Control Houston.